we've already seen our first transformations that was moving things left and right, up and down. What we're going to be doing in this course all the way through is looking at a bunch of different transformations. How do we, what else can we do to a graph? So today, we're going to look at reflecting. What happens when we reflect it vertically over the x-axis? What happens when we reflect something, so I take that red graph and reflect it horizontally over the y-axis? How does that affect the equation? What does that look like? And we're going to see some patterns that connect to what we already saw when moving things left, right, up, and down. So what I, you have some space off to the side of your page right beside this box. We're going to add some notes into that space. I'm going to add mine underneath right here. And we're going to start with y equals f of negative x. So here, using the same language we did with translations, here the negative is inside the function. So when the negative When the negative is inside the function with the x, everything that we had inside the function when we did translations, that moved things horizontally left and right. The same thing happens with reflections. When the negative is inside the function, we have a horizontal reflection over the y-axis. So just like before, things inside the function affect our graph horizontally, they are going to affect the x-coordinate. So if we look at just a single point, let's say I had the point 4, 3. If I reflect it horizontally over the y-axis, I'm going to get a new point, and the coordinates of this new point are going to be negative 4, 3. And what has happened is our x value has changed, and our x value has been multiplied by a negative 1. So whenever we have a horizontal reflection, we're changing x values. And what's going to be mentally maybe hard for you to think about is the fact that it's reflecting over the y-axis. So you might be tempted, your brain might be tempted, when someone says, can you reflect it over the y-axis? You heard the word y, so you want to change the y values just because you heard the word y. But I want you to think about what happens if you took a single point and you reflected it in the y-axis. That's horizontally. That point is moving straight across horizontally, and all horizontal transformations affect our x-coordinates. Similarly, we'll add to this note, if you had y of negative f of x, if the negative is outside the function, If the negative is outside the function, we have a vertical reflection over the x-axis. And again, we can imagine a single point Maybe I take the point 3, 5, reflecting it over the x-axis. That point 
the x value is not going to change, but your y value is being multiplied by a negative 1. So we have the same idea of inside the function affects our x values, outside the function affects our y values. Algebraically, it's just multiplying your y values by a negative 1. Every time you flip something over, it's still the same distance away from the x-axis. It's just on the other side. So algebraically, that's multiplying by a negative 1. Graphically, that's flipping it over an axis. So a vertical reflection flips over an x-axis. A horizontal reflection flips over the y-axis. So if we go to example 1, here we have a graph and we want to sketch the image graph. So we already have seen this language before. Image graph is our new graph after a transformation and we're reflecting in the y-axis. So if I start from left to right with this key point, reflecting it over the y-axis is going to be a horizontal reflection. This point is going to go over to there. The second point reflected straight over. Third point is three away, so I go three away in this direction. And then you get to play connect the dot again. There we go. Perfect. So there is our new graph. There's the image graph. We want to state the domain and range of both of these, so I'll start with our new one, the blue one. I'm going to use interval notation for this. So interval notation starts at your smallest value and goes to your biggest value. For domain, those are our x values, so our smallest x value on the blue graph is negative 5. And that negative 5 is with a square bracket because it's included. And our largest x value is 3. Our range, our smallest y value, is negative 2. Our largest y value is positive 2. On our original graph in red, so I'll switch to a red pen here, the smallest x value on our red graph is negative 3. Our largest value on our x graph, positive 5. Our range still goes from negative 2 to 2. Now this question didn't ask us to write the equation in terms of the function g, but I'm going to do that just for practice anyways. So the equation of our blue graph in terms of g, here we have to say to ourselves, OK, what kind of reflection was it? A horizontal reflection or a vertical reflection? Is it going to be inside the function or is it going to be outside of the function? Well, we reflected over the y-axis. That flipped this graph horizontally. And so it's going to be inside the function. Here is the equation of, uh, of our blue graph in terms of g. And we've got all the information there. Now, what we're going to find in different questions throughout your homework is now that we've learned a concept, so here's the new concept, how do reflections work? What do they mean with algebraically in this case, we were multiplying our x coordinates by a negative 1. You can see that on the graph, because here's our original point. We had the point 3, 1, sorry, negative 3, 1. If you multiply your x coordinate by a negative 1, that changes that point to positive 3, 1. So this negative inside is affecting only the x coordinate, and it's reflecting it over the y axis and we multiplied our x by a negative 1 to do that algebraically. With this new idea, what can happen is you could get a question like this. 
they say, we're not giving you the graphs. We're not giving you any of this. We're just telling you the original domain went from negative 3 to 5. The original range went from negative 2 to 2. If you reflect it over the x-axis, could you figure out the new domain and range if you didn't have a graph? Because we got our domain and range, right? We got our domain and range by looking at this graph. Oh, there we go. Right? We looked at that graph and wrote our domain and range. If I took that away and just gave you this red information, could you get this information? Well, we think about our reflection. What has happened? If you reflect horizontally, your x values get multiplied by negative 1. My y values wouldn't change. So I think the really easy one to see is, oh, my range was from negative 2 to 2. I know that my new range is from negative 2 to 2 because my x values are the only ones that are changing. My y values aren't. Does this make sense? If my x values get multiplied by negative 1, if my domain was from negative 3 to 5, does it make sense that it's now from negative 5 to 3? Can you see algebraically how that works? Now, if this is hard for you to go from just this abstract domain to a new domain, there's nothing wrong with inventing your own graph however you want. This red graph has a domain from negative 3 to 5. Create a graph that does that, reflect it, and see what happens. That can also help you. So what we have when we solve questions is we have a bunch of information that can help us. And sometimes on an exam question or a test question, one of the key pieces of information might be taken away. You can always put it back in, and that's a great mathematical strategy for trying to figure something out. You can also try to work your brain and say to yourself, could I go from here to here directly? Does that make sense to me? How would I go about doing that? OK, so the questions for practice on this one are 3 and 13. 